Hey there folks, I'm Mark, affiliated with Spectrum Pulse, and this, it's Billboard Breakdown. I, don't remember. I think I've started off so many episodes of Billboard Breakdown recently, hoping that there's some vestige of normal coming, and I think that's where I've been channeling the majority of my anxieties surrounding where the hell we're all gonna end up in a couple of months. Now granted, I know this probably won't last here. We got a breather this week before we get the, the baby album bomb that nobody was asking for next week, but hey, small blessings, right? Oh, whatever. Top 10, where to some surprise, the Blinding Lights by the weekend reclaimed the number one, riding the top spot on the radio and sales, and not all that far behind on streaming. Again, this is a margins game, and it's worth the comparison with how it dethroned Tusi Slide by Drake down to number two, which has far better YouTube and stronger on-demand streaming. It just goes to show how much more streaming you need to match a robust airplay margin, which is just slightly bigger between The Weeknd and Drake than the YouTube margin. Now, this leaves The Box by Roddy Rich at number three at a bit of an odd spot, because it peaked on the radio, and while it had good streaming and it leads YouTube, you can tell it's time the spotlight is fading. Then we had Don't Start Now by Dua Lipa up to number four, seemingly stable across the board, even in streaming, but the radio is wavering a little bit, and that could be telling going forward. What's more telling is Say So by Doja Cat up to number five, where she went on a radio tear in order to compensate for weaker sales, and she got Got the streaming to boot. Again, this is consistently strong. It's gonna stick around. Now, a little less certain about Adore You by Harry Styles up to number six, though. It's got great radio, but that's pretty much all it has, and that makes it vulnerable if that starts to collapse. Then we got Circles by Post Malone sliding back to number seven. It's on its way out despite a pretty good sales week, and while we're here, Life is Good by Future featuring Drake is falling to number eight, which despite stable streaming, you can kind of tell the radio is kind of done with it like I am. Unfortunately, it's also not the case for Intentions by Justin Bieber featuring Quavo at number 9, which is in the middle of a radio push and seems otherwise stable. Could we have this happen for Everything I Wanted by Billie Eilish at number 10 instead, which really just has radio at this point and is slipping into free fall? Just saying. Anyway, Losers and Dropouts, and in the latter group, there's not much. The Rod Wave album bomb nearly all disappeared, and it took What a Man Gotta Do by the Jonas Brothers and Homesick by Kane Brown with it. But I'd argue Country didn't really have a great week as a whole. Homemade by Jake Owen slid down to 67. What She Wants Tonight by Luke Ryan dropped to 77. Even You Should Be Sad by Halsey, which is country adjacent, it underperformed at 65. Outside of that, well, B-I-T-C-H with Megan The Stallion continues to underperform at 97. Turks by Nav Gunna and Travis Scott is continuing down to 63. Looks like this will not have the staying power some people anticipated. And Find My Way by DaBaby slipped off the debut to number 51. I mean, it's gonna rebound next week, folks, so yay? Maybe? Now, we didn't really have that many gains in return here either. I guess for Megan, it's a nice sign that Captain Hook is back at number 95, and still a great song. And that BS, but that's good for Jhene Aiko and her at 99, even if I'm kinda lukewarm on it. But what perplexes me is PT SD by G Herbo, Chance the Rapper, Lil Uzi Vert, and the late Juice World's at 90. Sign of the Times? Maybe? It certainly has that feel when we look at our gains and If the World Was Ending by J.P. Sachs featuring Julia Michaels is continuing up to 73. I'm warning you about that one. Then outside of July by Noah Cyrus and Leon Bridges getting an unexpected lift to 85. I don't know, I guess we did get some country songs having a modicum of success. Here and Now by Kenny Chesney got a boost off his debut last week to 79. After a few by Travis Denning got a nice bump to 55. And Beer Can't Fix by Thomas Rhett and John Party got a bounce to 44. I mean, I'm not about to complain, as most of these are not bad, but the traction just seems kind of sporadic, and I question how much staying power they will really have, that's all. I mean, I'm not willing to put too much hope here. But now we've got a reasonably healthy list of new arrivals, so let's get things started with number 100, Boss Bitch by Doja Cat. The general buzz I've been seeing behind this single has been, oh, thank God, Doja Cat finally has a legit good to great song on the charts. Which is kind of telling for me. It reinforces my suspicion that Say So has less organic groundswell than it might seem. Which is kind of ironic, because 
In other words, this is basically a Nicki Minaj song. From the clattering percussion, to the thicker bass, standing in for more melody, to especially a lot of Doja Cat's flow. Now that, in and of itself, isn't a bad thing. I dare say I like this more than most of Nicki's recent output, as the bars actually connect together, and the song doesn't feel as phoned in as some of Nicki's can be. But it's also highlighting how Doja Cat doesn't quite have the same expressive vocal personality Nicki has either, which is really becoming a consistent problem for all of her work, and has kind of made me miss more of her weird sense of humor. That being said, still fine enough, I guess. I'll take it. Number 98, Girl of My Dreams by Rod Wade. You look so good to me. I don't need another broken heart or sleepless night. God, please guide me right. I'm always a little bit surprised when songs hit the charts post-album bomb, which normally imply they were a fan favorite that grew over time, which it looks like this has. I point that out because, unfortunately, it's not really one of my favorites. It's got more of the chipmunk vocals playing off the thin acoustics. There's way more dependency on the crooning hook to play in very modern emo rap territory. And on that note, it does feel like a very tired girl as both angel and devil riff that is very stuck in this genre. It's not saying that the hook isn't catchy, it is, but it's absolutely a lesser cut from the album, although these days I do expect it to pick up traction. It does strike that note. It's not terrible, but not particularly good either. Number 96, Ride It by DJ Regard. Okay, you're gonna have to follow me on this one. Do you all remember Jay Sean? He was a Chris Brown wannabe from 2009. He had two minor hits, generally forgotten by everybody because he was that mediocre. Hell, I remember him most for when his fan base that I didn't expect existed, they blitzed one of my earliest album reviews of his Project Neon in 2013. But anyway, in 2007, he put out a song called Ride It, which in 2019 was remixed by DJ Regard into this, and it got the attention of TikTok and the rest is history. And what might be a better comparison is the Roses remix from St. John, because not only is the tempo up, we also have the vocals pitched down. So it kind of loses some of that forced, slinky feel of the original for something that is not quite feeling as sexy as it's trying to be. It's actually kind of bizarre, especially as the vocals start running together on the very wordy verses that are still trying to make this a bedroom jam? I don't know, the vibe feels more like a driving song or a dance track, which doesn't really fit well with the melody they're going for here, which is still very low key. I don't know, I get the appeal of this, I guess, but uh, in a revival of a Jay Sean remix, that doesn't excite me. Just saying. Number 93, In Between by Scotty McCreary. Friday night wild and quiet Sunday morning I think I'm comfortable saying that Scotty McCreary has outperformed all expectations for me. When he puts out albums, he usually gets at least one or two songs that I really love. So let me ask this. It's been over two years since that last album, and yet you're pushing more singles, and you're not pushing Home In My Mind? Why would you make such an asinine decision? And what's frustrating is that this isn't even bad. It's pretty basic, caught between country and city that actually becomes more about questioning his own place and identity. And I actually kind of like how he admits he's not quite ready for full-on marriage, even if he might want a relationship. And the percussion gets more organic pretty quickly, opposite a prominent and smooth guitar melody and some pedal steel. I mean, basically, the song's text might as well serve as the meta text for the song outright. It's not bad, but not really great either, just kind of in between. And yet in response, with expectations, just kind of find myself disappointed. Funny how that happens. Number 84, D&D &D by Polo G. All the smoke, fuck the peace sign. All gas, no brakes, we just gonna keep sliding. Hey, Glock hook a nigga, he get deep fried. I thought this was gonna go in a completely different direction by the title, and I actually got kind of excited. But no, Polo G is not making a song about Dungeons and Dragons, but keeping his phone on Do Not Disturb as he commits crimes. But I will say I actually quite like the production here. There's a real bass smolder backing up the trap beat, the piano captures that darker vibe, and Polo G ramps up his intensity pretty well for the second verse, even if the content is kind of by the numbers. I like how Polo G doesn't really shy away from the darker cost of everything he's doing, and I will say that 
that does keep things a little more interesting than him just going stupid. But I will say, I think some of those traces of sweeter melody could have really ramped up the darker bombast across the second verse and pushed this into some heavier emotive territory than just going back to the hook. But as it is, it's really damn solid. And while we're on that topic, number 80, Die From A Broken Heart by Maddie and Tay. Okay, I'm not about to place expectations on this. Frankly, I think it's a miracle Maddie and Tay are charting at all, let alone with one of the best songs from that last album, which is probably what got them the boost here. I like that this has got so much warm acoustic texture from the mandolin and acoustics, that the harmonies are so rich. The entire mix has this supple richness accented by the pedal steel, which is perfect to match the organic groove. And even if the lyrics feel kind of girlish in their heartbreak, as they seek counseling from their parents when it all falls apart, I mean, it's not really unrelatable. You talk to your folks when relationships break up, that happens. And I like some of the little details of the song. How they know they're gonna laugh about this ex someday. How they question how much of it was ever real when it can fall apart so easily. And in other words, you know, I still like Drunk and Lonely from that album a little more. Please make that a single. But this is a close second and a really good way to reintroduce Maddie and Tay to the mainstream. So yeah, I'm okay with this being here. Pretty great song. Check it out. Number 78, Seguiz Conel by Archangel and Sack. Hey look everyone, it's the reggaeton version of Treat You Better. This time with somehow even less personality. And really, there's not a lot to say about that beyond that description. Watery tones with no distinctive tune behind the standard percussion, and both artists crooning about how they could do better for this girl than the meathead lunk that she's seeing who can't get her off. I mean, this sounds less overwrought than Treat You Better, but it adds the problem of coming from two distinctive voices who repeat a lot of the same auto-tuned sentiments on their verses, and it blows the obvious opportunity to have them in competition for her, which could have been a cool idea commenting on how guys caricature the other man and it winds up being the same sort of projection. Sadly, that would have more ambition and try a lot harder than this does, which just winds up being really goddamn forgettable and not remotely good. Next, number 64, Broken a Minute by Tory Lanez. You know, I don't like Tory Lanez that much, but I'll give him some credit for making a lot out of the lockdown situation through his IG presence and continuing to shovel out mixtapes, which got two songs on the Hot 100 this week. Now, unlike his Chicks Tape series, this is from the set where he's trying to be a little rougher, more gangsta, more hype, which I guess translates to brand name porn and fucking girls over the shot of flow cadence? Apparently this was originally a freestyle over that beat, and yeah, I believe it, given how undercooked this now sounds over the weird flattened synth flutters in the standard trap beat. Now, I'll give this Tory Lanez, it's better mix than shot of flow. Hell, I actually might prefer this more. But at the same time, the flex is just not doing enough to make Tory Lanez all that interesting here, so uh... Pass? Number 59, Boyfriend by Selena Gomez. But I want love again and again. So there are two stupid things I want to highlight before I get into this song proper. One, this only exists because Selena Gomez released a deluxe edition of Rare, and I still can't possibly care about the mediocrity. And two, you just know the only reason this is called Boyfriend is because she wants to beat her ex Justin Bieber's song of the same name from 2012 in the search results. And all this is frankly more interesting than the actual song, which takes a similar groove to Kanye West's fade and marries it to a very low-key Billie Eilish riff. And since there's a co-writing credit from Julia Michaels, we got Selena Gomez crooning about how much she wants a boyfriend, even as she keeps striking out. I mean, what kind of amuses me that she's trying to frame this as being more playful and upbeat, which would be fine if she was able to sell a teasing or exciting air in her delivery instead of just dead-eyed bleariness. The entire song doesn't nail any real sense of mood, come to think of it. The groove implies some tighter sensuality, but the delivery and content can't match it beyond the most submissive and empty version imaginable. Thank you, Julia Michaels. In other words, no, not good. Next, number 54, Stupid Again by Tory Lanez. I 
I mean, if you give me a song with that title, the jokes write themselves, especially when it comes to Tory Lanez, where I wind up questioning where again came into the picture. But moving beyond that... It's actually okay. It tells me that Tory Lanez really wanted to go over the box production from Roddy Rich with a smattering of Meek Mill, and that Jay-Z interpolation is flagrant. But for a pure dumb hype anthem with symphonic bombast behind the trap beat and Tory delivering a lot of energy, it is pretty credible, especially when you open up with that ridiculous Conor McGregor quote. And from there, the song just gets even more absurd, especially with the girl blowing on his dick like a flute, which when you think about it just seems awkward, that he got the flu on a bitch, I have serious questions about your taste, and that he passes her like a hot potato, and then he calls out other guys for buying their women heels and taking them out for dinner. I mean, Tori, if you're calling that simp behavior, you got a back catalog that might speak against you. So in summary, I mean, it'll go off at the right moments, but again, certainly lives up to the title. Just saying. And finally, number 23, Level of Concern by 21 Pilots. I like you never heard, you could bring down my level of concern. So we've got another song made in the wake of the pandemic, but I will admit to being kind of shocked that 21 Pilots, of all people, that they're making it. Not to complain, from what I can tell, the money is going to help a charity for folks who work in the concert industry and got laid off, and that's cool to step. But 21 Pilots has always seemed to be in their own little world, where for a charity single, it's an odd choice. But okay, apparently this the biggest step on the song was reportedly Tyler Joseph using electric guitar instead of just bass. You can kind of tell, given how buried a lot of the guitar rollic proper is in the mix, but I'll admit this is still really good. On the one hand, it does feel like a more conventional song in the retro disco touches, the, the groove, and some of the keyboard melodies. At the same time, they're really good melodies, and 21 Pilots might be the, one of the few mainstream bands who can include quarantine in a song and not have it feel forced. And there's enough melodic tightness here to be pretty damn catchy. And I get the anxious sentiment of the song too, and looking for someone to tell him that it's all gonna be okay, just a reassurance in a world he doesn't quite understand especially when he just wants everyone around him to be safe. In other words, it, you know what, if we don't get any more quarantine songs, that'd be fine by me, because this kind of fills the role. Really good stuff. Actually, in fact, I'm gonna give 21 Pilots this one for level of concern, just edging out Die for a Broken Heart by Maddie and Tay for the best of the week, while Maddie and Tay will take honorable mention. Worst, I mean, it's kind of tough because there's not an absolutely crap song here, but I think I'm going to go with Singu's Connell by Archangel and Sec for being crap in a really boring way, with dishonorable mention sliding to Boyfriend by Selena Gomez, a song that does more for everything else around it than on its own. Still though, actually a pretty decent week, and you know what, watch it all get squandered thanks to a bad album bomb coming from DaBaby, stay tuned for that, but until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliated with Spectrum Force, and I'll see you next time.